This is Good Deeds Legacy 2. And it's going to now unite the legacy of the good deeder post-death with his legacy right down here today, now. It's really dramatic. And it ought to be easy to understand once you hear it. We all know that we're going to appear before Christ. He's going to look at each one of us and each one of us individually in the crowd. Everybody's going to see it. Everything I ever did wrong, everything I ever did right, is going to be a matter of public record. Remember where he says that everything's going to be brought to light that's hidden? Everything I ever did, everything I ever thought, is going to be a matter of public record. Same for you. Now, he's going to look at me and say, Okay, Braino, how'd you spend your time down in the body? I'd like to be able to say I didn't spend it wrongly, but I did. A whole bunch of us have our certain ideas today about what right and wrong is. We're all going to feel bad about how much time we watched football. We're going to feel bad about the times that we spent on sin of one kind or another. All those bad thoughts that we had, everybody's going to know. All the times we were petty. All the times we were self-righteous. All of our gross sins, which, you know, they aren't as bad as the self-righteous sins, but they're bad enough. Everything we did is going to be on public display. Everything we thought. So how we spent our time, for better and for worse, is going to be on display. So the 20 or 30 minutes I spent playing with some bobby pins that I could have spent instead learning Christ, whoops, you got that point? Here's what I did spend my time on. Here's what I did spend my thoughts on versus what I was supposed to spend my time and thoughts on. Christ spent his time and his thoughts on what? Learning and living on Bible, Matthew 4.4. 4. Satan was tempting Christ to do a good deed, feed if he's going to turn one stone into bread for himself, why not do it for everybody? As my pastor likes to say, why not turn the whole world into gingerbread? And world hunger right now. That's really what's behind Satan's taunt. And he's so polite about it when he says it. He's like, oh, I can't stand to see you suffering. Why not speak these stones into bread? Speak the stones into bread. Satan's got Deuteronomy 8 in mind. So the Lord plays off that by his answer. So what did the Lord do? What word Jesus thought? What word Jesus did? Was the word, not works. So how did he spend his time down here? 30 years, you don't hear much of anything from him except a little bit in the book of Luke when he's 12 years old. Uh oh. So he wasn't busy doing works, huh? Because when he's tested at age 30, and he doesn't even get tested till he's 30, big time test, he's tested to do what? Good deeds. That's a temptation to do good deeds? Uh oh, then good deeds must not be so good after all. Hmm. 
Yeah, and what did he do during that 30 years? He spent his time on what? The Word. Uh oh. So here I am standing before him at the judgment seat of Christ, and everything's all with the raptures just to happen. And everybody's thoughts and deeds are public display. That's 1 Corinthians 3. What did I spend my time on? Did I spend my time on what I looked like in that new dress? Or wearing that makeup? Or how much I was better than the other Christian? Did I spend my time looking at glossy magazines? Or being intellectual? Pick your favorite sin. Did I waste my time on movies or on good deeds? Rather than learning the Word of God like Christ did? Whoops. And here's what compounds that problem even more. I can spend five minutes thumbing through those stupid ads that come every Wednesday and stuff my mailbox. Or I can spend that five minutes doing a good deed. Everybody would say, oh, brother, you should do the good deed. Okay. How good? Is the good deed that you have in mind I should do as good as the good deed God has in mind? Wouldn't God's idea of a good deed be superior in judgment, discernment, and everything else to the idea that you have about what's a good deed? Hmm? And what did he say? What did he command us to do? Go look it up. It's in at least six places in the gospel. Ask anything in my name and I'll do it. Ask. Whoops. So, hi, Dad, God, my Lord, Jesus Christ, I'm standing in front of you. And I spent five minutes giving money to charity when instead I could have spent the same five minutes asking you to solve all the charity problems and you'd have done it because he said ask anything in my name and I'll do it whoops okay so instead of doing that good deed when I gave to charity actually I am to blame and I did a very bad deed when I gave to that charity because I did the giving instead of asking you to do the giving. You're training me to be a king, not a peasant. The king orders everybody around. The king says a thing and it gets done. The king doesn't do it. You basically, you basically ordained, ordered, mandated when you said, ask anything in my name, 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 and I will do it. You'll do it, Dad. You'll do it, my Lord God. You'll do it, the Holy Spirit. We are commanded to ask. We're not commanded to do so if instead of doing what we are commanded to do, which is ask, and we instead do the do-do ourselves, that we have just cheated the world out of a royal power given to us that we did not use. That's tantamount to accusing the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of neglect. 
here you had this problem in this part of the country, like FEMA, for example. Everybody likes to say how bad FEMA isn't doing its job. Okay, but we're not doing ours. Our job is to ask. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. That's our job. He doesn't say, do it on your own and I will bless you. He says, ask anything in my name and I will do it. Not you will do it. So if we neglect that rule, which the rule is there to train us to be rulers, because they, you have to really think hard about what you're going to ask God for. Don't you get a little nervous when you go to ask God for something? Don't you even avoid prayer because you feel kind of nervous? Don't they make movies about people who, who they have to be all the way down in, in the middle of a, you know, a, a hole, a cave, a well, before they look up and ask God for help? Because they feel they're not supposed to. That's the opposite of what Christ said. Ask anything in my name and I'll do it. Ooh, ooh. We're commanded to ask him and we don't ask. We do something of our own instead. So let's say the value of what God would have done if you asked him to take care of charity that you did your $10 yourself. Let's say instead of doing the $10, you went to God and said, Dad, I can't stand it that those people in Nigeria are hurting. I can't stand it that those kids are going hungry. And I especially can't stand it that they don't have Bible. Please, Dad, get them food, get them clothing, get them everything, and above all, get them Bible. Let's pretend the commercial value of that prayer. Oh, I know, $20, $30 billion minimum. You're talking about a whole country that has to change so those people can get Bible. The whole country has to be renovated in order for them to have the logistical stability to get Bible. Just $20, $30 billion I just asked for. And God will do it, and then he did. Versus the $10 that I put in the collection plate during the same amount of time as I prayed that prayer. What's my liability if I didn't pray as I just did? Well, see, let's say $20 billion to be charitable. $20 billion minus $10. I'm in debt. The more good deeds you do, the more you're in debt, says Paul in Romans 4, 5. If you're not learning and living on Bible, you're worse than a murderer, says 1 John 3, 18. Yeah. Because you have the power. The executive royal power to ask anything in his name and he'll do it. And you don't ask? That would be tantamount to the President of the United States refusing to do his job. They would impeach him for that, and you will be impeached too. When I say you, I'm including myself. I'm just as much as guilty about this as anybody else. Why didn't I ask? The world needs me to ask because you know what? Christians are the only people who have authority. That's Romans 5. We're the only ones who have the authority before the throne of grace. The Muslim can't pray for himself. The Baha'i can't pray for himself. The Mormon can't pray for himself. Most of the Christians can't pray for themselves either because they're not even sure who God is. They believe in so many false doctrines, they're carnal. God isn't going to hear a prayer of a carnal person. Psalm 32.5 and 66.18 tells you that. You have to be between sins, which means you have to use 1 John 1, 9 all the time. You have to be learning and living on Bible under your right teacher in order to know even what to ask for properly. Because you're going to the throne room of heaven. You don't just wander in there with your earrings and your tattoos and say, Hey, Dad, I want this. You have to know what you're asking for and what the parameters are and why. And of course, you never will know all those answers. 
So that dictates a very different kind of prayer. Dad, look, I want all the terrorists killed, but I really don't know what's the right way to go about it. I don't have the facts like you do. I know that you want them killed. I also know that you have your own idea about who and when and why and how. So I'm asking for that. It's something like that. It's very, it gets to be very circumspect because you know he's going to do what you ask because he said so. Ask anything in my name and I'll do it. That makes you real cherry about what you ask. But it also means that if you don't ask, you're responsible for whatever's wrong. Welcome to ruling. So, the legacy of the good deeds, the good deeder, the good deeds legacy is punishment, penalty, pettiness, puerile about God. You never grow up. You remain a peasant because you didn't learn to go under a pastor and learn and live on Bible and pray. All those peas, stuttering over all those peas. So you're peeing on the carpet of the spiritual life. Now, when a puppy pees on the carpet, I don't know what name for carpet that begins with a P. I wish I did. On the plush carpet, the puppy pees on the plush carpet. You don't talk nice to the dog when he does that. Because if you talk nice to the dog when he pees on the plush carpet, he'll do it again just to hear the sound of your voice. So what you must do with a puppy or a child or a childish Christian is you got to ream them out. And that takes a good deal of discernment too and you never quite are sure you got it right. I mean, you don't, you don't throw the puppy against the wall. But you gotta, you gotta ding him on his nose or ding him on his hind, his hiney or something. Say, no! Bad! So he associates the, the sort of shock of it with what he just did. And he'll do it six or seven or ten or fifteen more times before it finally sinks in that what he's doing on the carpet is associated with something he doesn't want to have happen again. The same thing is true with a baby or a child. You cannot afford to be nice to a child if what the child is doing is wrong. You have to be sharp. You have to be stern. The child will remember it. If you're sharp and stern, if you're nice and, oh, Johnny, time out. You shouldn't do that. Then Johnny's going to do it again just so he can hear that sound in your voice. Because to him it's pleasant. He's getting attention. If instead you say, Johnny, shame on you. And, you know, you, you have to be careful how you are mean to somebody. Because it's supposed to be productive, not just being mean for the sake of being mean. But they will remember only if you're mean. They will learn it only if you're mean. And I've had people that I was mean to. And I, and I always get sick after I get mean in the comments. I've had people that I was mean to like five, ten years ago. They, they come back. They remembered how mean I was to them. And I don't know, God used it. Because I, I had no idea if it was the right thing to say or not at the time. And they come back to me and say, you know, God did this and God did that. And he caused me to remember what you said. And they got out of whatever it was they were in. I don't remember. They remember. God used it to help get them out of the poison. Here we're talking about the poison of good deeds, but there's all kinds of poisons we get into. So that's the, the, the good deeds legacy is that they're spreading poison. And the poison is going to come back to bite them. 
because they're busy doing good deeds and they're ignoring the good deed that God commanded us to do. Learn and live on the Word of God, Matthew 4.4, 4. ask anything in my name, which only Christians have the privilege of doing. Do you concern about the Muslims? Aren't you, aren't you, doesn't it bother you that those poor people can't find Christ? Doesn't it bother you that a lot of the Coptic Christians in Egypt are living in trash cities because they're ostracized by the Muslims? Do you want to do something about that? Oh, I'm going to go crusade and I'm going to put $5 in the collection plate as we collect. No, here's what you do. You go to God and you say, Dad, these are Christians living in trash cities. Something's got to be done. I'm asking for everything I can ask for to be done to help those people get out of there, to protect them. Who else can ask for them but you, if you know the problem? Why do you think you find out that Joe Blow's got a problem, or Jane Doe's got a problem, or someone comes onto your video with a comment that you know is wrong? Why do you think that happens to you? Because you're supposed to pray about it. You are an executive. You are royal. You have royal powers. You are not a peasant. And if you insist on doing, spending your time like a peasant, yeah, every cup of water in the Lord's name. Yeah, that gets a penny's reward, but you're not allowed to do the peasant's job. They got the Muslims for that. Satan hires the Muslims for all those jobs. He hires the unbeliever. He hires the people who don't believe in Christ, and he hires carnal Christians. Okay, but if you are not one of them, you're not hired for that job. The people who come into contact with you with their problems, you're supposed to pray for them. Not do for them, pray for them. And don't even tell them. Because the whole idea is for them to get the solution from God, not from you. Ask anything in my name and I'll do it. If you have that power and that wealth at your disposal and you don't use it, what is God going to do to you? If you say, well, I put $10 in the collection plate, and I sang rah, rah, Jesus, uh -huh. and during that same amount of time, what could you have done? Remember how I began this audio? I'm going to be standing before him, and he's going to say, how did you spend your time? If I could have spent my time asking for all the world's problems to be solved, and I didn't do that. Oh, I'm in big time trouble. Forever. Rather than trying to do it myself, I ask. Because the whole point of this thing is for God to do the doing, not me. The whole witness is coming from God, not me. We think we're witnessing. No, it's God doing the witnessing. We just get to practice what we're learning, what we're learning. It's not doing any good. All my witnessing and all your witnessing aren't doing any good to anybody. It's practice for us to learn royal thinking, royal action. The one who's doing the witnessing is God. The Greek verb martyrao means you are put in the witness box in a trial and you are supposed to account for that means somebody's doing it to you just the opposite of what Christians think witnessing means it's not something you do it's something done to you martyreo is the, is the Greek word in my badly accented English that's the word translated to, to witness You are supposed to learn and do royal things. If you didn't ask in his name but you spent your time on good deeds, then you didn't fulfill the royal power you have. How did you spend your time, brain out? Did you spend your time doing good deeds? Or did you spend your time the way my son sent it, spent it? Learning and living on Bible and asking everything in my name because of course he's asking father in his own name in John 17 that's what the Lord did he didn't do any good deeds he learned Bible and he prayed whoops so that's what I better do if it's good enough for Christ it sure as heck is good enough for me 
I'm not better than Christ, so something else should be good enough for me. So if instead I'm living like the Muslim and the unbeliever and the carnal Christian doing good deeds when I could have just asked anything in his name, then the differential between what I did, which is bad, even if it's good, it's bad because of what I could have done. The differential between what I could have done and what I did do. The, the world suffered loss because I didn't do what I could do. If the president said, oh, I don't want to be president today. Yeah, there's this summit. Oh, yeah, there's the summit of the industrialized nations and blah de blah de blah I think I'm just going to, oh, you know what? I feel like giving money to the poor. Let's see, how much money do I have in my pocket? I got a couple hundred dollars in my pocket. Uh, I'll see you later, Secret Service agents. I'm just going to walk down to this church four miles away and just forget about being president and give my $200 to the church. See, I did a good deed. And everybody on earth would say, I'm sorry, you don't have the right to do that. You're supposed to be the president. Do your job. Yeah, Christian, you're supposed to ask anything in his name. Do your job. Not someone else's job. Not the job of the unbeliever. Not the job of the Muslim. Not the job of the carnal Christian because he won't be doing God's jobs anyway. He's too proud of himself. So how did you spend your time on earth, Christian? Spreading the poison of good deeds or spirituality, which is the hallmark characteristic of Islam? Or did you do what my son did, Matthew 4.4, 4, learn and live on Bible, and pray for everything unceasingly, 1 Thessalonians 5. Peace out.